Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So, my channel's recently hit 3,000 subscribers, and I figured for my 3,000 subscriber special, I wanted to do something with a ThinkPad. So, I went in my closet, and I found this T400, and I decided that for the 3,000 sub special, I would be installing Libreboot on it. So, if you don't know, Libreboot is a completely free and open source software, that's FOSS, replacement for the normal uh, Lenovo BIOS firmware that you might find on a machine like this. It's available for a couple of models of ThinkPad, as well as some other machines, and its intention is basically to replace all of the code that runs before your operating system with a compatible free software equivalent. In this video, we'll be going over the process of installing Libreboot, as well as my experience installing it on this T400. After that, we'll be taking a look at Triscoll GNU Linux installation on Libreboot, and a particularly neat encryption feature only available for machines with Libreboot or Coreboot. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Before we can start installing Libreboot, we'll need an SPI flasher device. Mine's made out of a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus and a Pomona 5252 chip clip, connected via some cheap wires I found in the basement. I bought my Pomona clip on DigiKey, though other options are available. Though software flashing more akin to a traditional BIOS update is possible on some systems, unfortunately the ThinkPad T400 is not one of these. With the Pi freshly installed with DietPi and connected to my network, it was time to find out its IP address. Though this can be done with other tools such as Nmap, I chose to use Adafruit's Raspberry Pi Finder, simply because it's an easy way to do this. Once you've SSH'd into the Pi, run an apt-get update, then install the packages suggested by the Libreboot guide. With the packages installed, the flasher is, in theory, complete. However, as I later found out, DietPi was not the right choice for this project. Instead, I later opted to switch over to Raspbian Lite, as this seems to have better support for the Raspberry Pi's SPI. As such, you'll see the hostname of the device change later in the video. With the flasher done, it's now time to check the EC firmware revision of the ThinkPad T400. This has to be done because, while Libreboot can boot a T400 just fine, updating the EC firmware is not yet possible, meaning that if it's not already at the latest version, 1.06, you have to update that on the stock BIOS before you flash Libreboot. That means that it's time to boot into my questionably trustworthy Windows 7 PE and upgrade the BIOS and EC to the latest revision using the official Lenovo tool. Unfortunately, this requires a battery, something that my T400 lacks completely. Though I was able to upgrade the BIOS without a battery using WinFlash, the EC remained unchanged. I also tried updating it from DOS, but unfortunately that didn't work either. I've worked out that if you take this X220 battery, which doesn't fit in the T400, and jam it in the back of the T400, you can make it think that it's got a battery, presumably for long enough to pass the BIOS check. So let's try that. Alright, so I didn't catch it on camera, but as you can see, the X220 battery bodge worked. Basically, I just held the laptop on its side and then held this X220 battery up to the connector uh, until Windows said it was charging. And then I was able to um, start the EC update using the official Lenovo tool, and it worked. It detected the battery, it let us start, and I was able to take the battery out once it rebooted. Arm was kind of sore, but it worked. You'll also need to take note of your system's MAC address, listed in the BIOS and on a sticker on the bottom. With the EC firmware at 1.06, we can now begin taking apart the ThinkPad. This begins by taking every single screw out of the bottom of the T400. Thankfully for me, my T400 was already missing almost all of its screws when I got it, but this'll take a while if your T400 is more normal. From then on, it's a regular ThinkPad teardown. First palm rest, then keyboard, keyboard bezel, both speakers, modem cable, speaker cable, intricate and decidedly Lenovo-looking random metal plate, modem card, Wi-Fi card, optical drive, and the hard drive if one's installed, deroute this cable, LCD connector, screen assembly, yellow BIOS battery, fan connector, other intricate and decidedly Lenovo-looking random metal plate, cooling assembly, failing at separating the metal frame from the plastic case before realizing your T400 actually did have one screw, and finally the motherboard. Now you can connect your Pomona clip to the BIOS chip, located next to the RAM. Unfortunately, when I tried to test this, I discovered that DietPi didn't have any SPI devices in slash dev. Though this could maybe have been fixed, I opted to to simply reinstall with Raspbian Lite and repeat the software steps we've already taken. Thankfully, this worked and the flash chip was detected properly. This meant that it was now time to back up the factory BIOS in case the Libreboot flash didn't work. To make sure your flasher is working properly, the factory BIOS should be backed up three times and the three versions compared using SHA-512 sum. If they're the same, then you know the flasher is reliable, and one of these versions should be uploaded to at least one cloud storage provider to ensure that it is not lost. I personally put it on Google Drive, Mega, as well as my own FTP server. Then, download the correct Libreboot image for your hardware, preferred payload, and ROM size, and modify it using ICH9Gen to include your system's MAC address. Once you've generated your Libreboot image, flash it back to the device using FlashROM. 
This will take quite a while, as in addition to writing the new content, it also has to read the chip, erase it, and verify. Once that's done, it's time to put the ThinkPad back together. Though I don't need to show the entire reassembly process, I did decide to test the laptop midway through. Though it didn't initially work, it did after I removed the top stick of RAM. I'm not really sure what causes this, but it did turn on successfully. With Libreboot up and running, it was now time to install an operating system. So what better for a completely free software firmware replacement than Trisquil? If you're following the Libreboot guides yourself, then just remember that you need to use the full Trisquil DVD rather than Trisquil Lite so as to have access to the text mode setup including the options that allow Libreboot to use an encrypted slash boot partition, a major benefit of Libreboot or Coreboot. I've skipped over most of the install process, given that it's pretty much just standard Debian, but it is worth noting that encrypting the slash boot partition takes a bit of work with the partitioner. Detailed instructions for how to do this can be found on the Libreboot website, but I figured it'd still be worth it to show it, since it is a little different from normal. After that, the disk will be secure wiped. This took about 4 hours on the 60 gig hard drive I had in there, but it can vary. Once the Triskel installation was done, it had to be booted through the grub command line due to the encrypted slash boot we set up earlier. This, however, isn't much of a problem, since once you boot the system, you can modify your grub config configuration and flash it back to the BIOS chip so that this is handled automatically in the future. I also chose to add an option to boot a normal unencrypted hard drive in case I ever want to boot off a drive that isn't the one I have in there right now. So that's Libreboot installation on this ThinkPad T400. If you did enjoy the video then please do subscribe as we're still a very very small channel and it does help us grow. And until next time, bye!